a.m. I'd like to welcome everybody to the work session of Limestone County Commission, August the 7th. Um, do we have any public comment, Ellen? We do. Keith Southern. Keith Southern. Mr. Southern, if you don't mind, step right up here to the microphone, please. How are you doing today, Keith? Hey, good, good. Yeah, my name's uh, Keith Southern. Um, we farm over in uh, off of Huntsville Browns Free Road. Been there almost 150 years. We've got four crops, hogs and chickens. And um, just wanted to comment on this Autumn Woods subdivision proposal and uh, how it's going to severely negatively affect our farm. And there's uh, many items in this subdivision that have not been thoroughly reviewed after our meetings with the county engineering department. And uh, we're, you know, we're really worried about how we're going to continue to farm with this uh, proposed subdivision right in the middle of us. Uh, multiple things we talked with the engineer. That he hasn't had adequate time to review the stormwater controls because there's so many proposals coming in at the same time. The southeast corner of this land is not even surveyed and marked. There's electrical line that comes back to my house that's north of this land that's uh, not shown on the drawings where it's going to end up. So it's been there 70 years. My house has been there 70 years. Um, we have terraces that control the water on our fields that run into this land that is not shown on the drawings how that water is going to be controlled. Is it going to be blocked or allowed to pass through? Um, it's not clear who's responsible to enforce these uh, approved drawings if they are approved. The county engineer says, uh, or Mr. Black says uh, they have no authority to enforce it. So who, who, who does enforce these once they're approved? That's my question. Uh, to protect us, since we have so many, uh, there's, this affects us so greatly, including a road to my house, power line water storm water drainage uh, contractors already come out and stated he'll do multiple items different from the drawings um, if the county's not gonna thoroughly review we can hire our own engineer to review the drawings provide comments we're told it was a responsibility to sue the developer if the storm water design is incorrect and causes damage so why not review ahead of time and make sure everything's accurate? Retainage pond, there's a current retainage pond on the drawing shown with no outlet, and if it spills over, it causes severe soil erosion across our fields. So that's, that's uh, multiple issues we have with this proposal. I'd like to see uh, more time given to review this since Anna you know consideration given since we've been there so long and this has just come in the last few months has been sold and thank you all right thank you miss southern now southern now if you don't mind step up to the microphone please sir how are you doing today I'm Niall Southern. Uh, this is my son, Keith, who just spoke. I own a farm immediately in, uh, to the west of this subdivision that's being built. And uh, as he said, uh, we're, we're concerned about the water flow, which a lot of water comes from my farm across the subdivision, for, uh, which is now goes through a natural waterway at the lowest point on the new subdivision. Goes into a uh, two 24 inch pipes, goes under our road that goes from Browns Ferry Road back to the, uh, the house that my son lives in. And uh, they're proposing to channel all this water into a pipe going through this natural waterway now of course, they have three pond, uh, ponds they plan to hold the water in. But we're concerned about the backup of the water onto my property. And I have crops that I plant on my property. I have 
I own 40 acres there. I also own, to the north of this, I own 34 more acres, which adjoins this subdivision property. So our biggest concern is, is the water situation and our road and the power line that goes back. But to start with, they said, said they would do away with their road and we would not have a power line. They'd go underground. We told them we want to keep our road and we want to keep our power line because we don't want power coming from the subdivision. And so they've changed, now they've changed their mind and said we can keep our road and we can keep our power line. So apparently they thought they could do stuff that they really could not do. And uh, I always thought we could keep our road. I knew we could keep our road, but I didn't know about the power line. But no, we can keep our power line according to the law now, I think. So that, that's our biggest concern about the subdivision, which, is, like he said, is in the middle of the property. And I farm on both sides of this subdivision. I own property on the west side, but I farm on the east side of it also. So that's our concerns about this. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure that it's been thought out or planned like it should be. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further comments? No further comments. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. And uh, all righty. Okay, first thing on the agenda for today will be the minutes from uh, July the 17th of 2023. Anybody got any issues with the minutes or anything that was on the minutes? All right. We'll have claims in the amount of $2,602,907.70. Anybody got an issue with any claim being paid? Well, we have no public hearing, um, resolutions and orders. Um, first resolution on here will be to approve a resolution to display the national motto, In God We Trust, in the Limestone County Commission Chambers and in conjunction with the Limestone County Seal. And what led this on was um, I went to the NACO conference and there was a, uh, they were asking people to adopt this throughout the country and um, 17 counties in the state have already done this. And um, so I think, you know, if it's on our money and in God we trust, that's what we put our faith in anyway. So what we'll be doing is, is giving us the right to um, um, display in God we trust across the commission chamber here or in junction with a seal. So that was um, something that they have a big push nationwide to try to keep in God we trust in everything. So I just thought it was, you know, it's retro, you know, good things. So anybody got anything with that? I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> but that's where all that's come from. Like I said, it was 17 counties through the state that have already done it. They wanna, they're pushing to try to get all counties to do it. So, all right. Anybody, nobody got no, no issue, no discussion. No. No. Okay. All right, next on here will be to approve a resolution to move the August 21st meeting, which will be the next following meeting in the Monday, to the 18th on a Friday. Um, this is because of lack of a quorum, and plus some people are going to be out of town. So anybody got any issues with that? I know Daryl, that gives you plenty of time to worry doctor's appointments and whatever. So yeah. it will be the 18th and, at 9 instead of Monday. The Yeah. So anybody got any issue with that? All right. No more moving on with that. Um, contracts, agreements, and MOUs. Um, first on here will be to approve a service agreement with between tri has Solutions and Limestone County Jail for medical waste disposal. This is a pretty much an every deal year thing. We just have to re-up these things. Anybody got anything with that? All right, next on here will be to approve Limestone County um, Community Corrections to apply for a grant for um, administrative office um, courts to implement um, veterans treatment court. Anybody got an issue with that? And that's um, grants we're just applying for. All right, next on here will be to approve to enter into a 24-month um, lease agreement with John Deere Financial from government lease for of a 60G um, compact excavator utilized through the source well bid. Anybody got an issue with that? Well, Mr. Or Chairman, that'll be my district. Uh, we're replacing one of the uh, older machines that we've got that we, before we start having trouble with it. Uh, it's got... I think about 2,500, maybe 3,000 hours on it. So that's what this is, it'll be a replacement for that machine. So I'll put it on gov deals just as soon as I can get get a hold of this and know that it's good to go. But that's what it's about, Mr. Chairman. All righty. Anybody mm -hmm. got else? All right. Um, 
Number four will be to improve a learn term density uh, subsidy contract um, between the Limestone County um, and the uh, Alabama Department of Youth Services. This is something we just approve every year. Anybody got any uh, discussion with that? I can't even talk today. No. All right. Number five, moving on, uh, be to approve an MOU with Athens State University to allow employees, parents, spouses, and children to receive a 10% ten, a tuition discount on classes and, um, and a waive administration fee, um, application fee. This is, um, Athens State reached out to me. Um, they have, this is a recruiting tool they have, you know, for your employees, whatever, but anybody who works for the county or a parent or a child of anybody who works here is eligible for a 10% discount by us being a partner with them in education. It's no cost to the county. It's just a uh, something that they're trying to do to give back to the community and stuff. So, so if anybody has a child or a parent or anybody want to go back and get a class, you can get a 10% discount if you're an employee of Limestone County Commission. And like I said, your application fees will be waived. All right, so moving on. Anybody got any discussion? Anybody? All right. All right. Number six will be to approve to enter into a service contract with um, cylinder elevator service for three years uh, maintenance of elevators. Anybody got any, any discussion with that? All right. Number seven will be to approve uh, apply for a five thousand dollar grant through Walmart community grant program. This is for the Limestone County Sheriff's Office. This will be to purchase a K-9 and it will be no cost or no match money to the county. I didn't know Walmart had dogs. <laughs> so, but anyways, that's a good deal. And I know the sheriff's working hard on trying to get a lot of these things implemented and that will be a real good tool to the county and the asset to the Sheriff's Office. So, But anyways, any discussion? All right, we have um, three budget revisions today. Um, the first one on here is for District 2. That's the purchase of a piece of equipment. The number four, we'll, District 4 has got one on here. And District 3, that is for a, uh, a vehicle for um, to move trailers. Yeah. I ain't buying no cars. That's, that's recycled. That's recycling. That's recycling. I don't know why I said that. I meant to say District 3. Y'all trying to break me, I think. Oh, trying to break you? Well, that's recycling. <laughs> yeah, the that. number four, the third one on here, I said, I might have said three. But that's for a, a vehicle for recycling for $30,000. Anybody got any discussion with any one of three of the budget revisions? All right, moving on. We have no merchant purchases, no board appointments, award bids. Personnel action, we have a ton of our personnel action today. Um, and I had talked with Drew about this the other day, and it's not a, and I had asked Ellen this morning, um, if y'all don't have any issue with all of the personnel action, we'll just take up in one motion in the meeting to save from going through so many motions and whatever. But um, we'll go through it here, and if anybody has any issue with anybody, we'll, we'll discuss it out here, and we'll go from there. But if we do, we can, we can break out one at a time if y'all have any issue with anybody. So, <coughs> All right. First on here will be to approve to hire um, um, Bradley and Nathaniel Broadway Jr. as a deputy in this expedition, and this is effective 8-16. Uh, 23 and it's pending a drug screening. Um, I'll just read through what's on this page and we'll stop. Approved to hire Jacob Allen Johnson as a deputy, effective 8-7, pending a drug screening. Approved to hire Preston Tyler Green as a deputy, this is for expedition. Um, this will be effective 8-7 of 23, pending a drug screening. Number four will be to approve to hire Kenneth Ray Andrews Jr. as a deputy, effective 8-7, pending a drug screening. And number five will be to approve to hire um, Nicholas Connor Hinton, for, I mean transfer from corrections officer to dispatcher, and this will be effective 8-7. And number six will be to uh, approve to transfer uh, Co um, Curtis Boyd from corrections officer to patrol deputy effective 8-7. Anybody got any issues so far with anybody or any discussion? All right, number seven will be to approve to transfer um, Roland, Hippolyta, is that how you say that? Hippolyta. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, Sheriff, correct me on that name. How do you say that? Hippolito. Hippolito, okay. Hippolito, <laughs> all right. Hippolito, for, well, this is for a corrections officer to patrol deputy effective 8 7. And number eight will be to transfer Justin Smith from patrol deputy to school resource officers 8 7. And number nine will be to transfer Jake Abernathy from patrol deputy to investigator, which I, they, him and the next two have already been assigned to investigators. That was just for those two positions that we had created on you know, the staffing plan. So I just gonna give y'all a little 
Um, so that'll be for him and Jesse Gibson. Both will be eight seven. Will be transferred to a full investigation from just being assigned to investigations. And number eleven will be to prove to hire Matthew Wigington as a corrections officer um, eight seven pending a drug screening. And number twelve will be to prove to transfer Richard Clanton from patrol deputy to patrol lieutenant um, effective eight seven. Now through the first twelve, has anybody got any discussion or any issues? We're taking all those up in one motion to say from going through all of the 12 matters. We're good with it. And, uh, all right. You coming? <clears throat> we'll hang on a minute and see if the sheriff's got an issue with someone else. Yeah. Um, Danny Craig is supposed to be promoted to. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he was already, uh, do we need to put that on there? Uh, it yeah, should be. <laughs> Okay, and we'll, we'll make a number 13 here for Danny Craig, and I think I had, I knew Danny Craig was already doing, we'd already done it, I just, okay. And Danny Craig will be 13, he'll be, he's going to patrol captain from leaving of Rhett, Rhett retiring. It'll be okay. 14. It'll right. be, thir well, we'll put it as 13, and number 14 is a different ethic. Okay. So we'll, all right. And the last one on here will be to approve to make a transitional emergency management officer's job description and um, this is an uh, added position to the staffing plan, which will go away when we, when we hire. Daphne is retiring from down to EMA. Right. And um, Daphne's done a bunch of years of service to the county, and we want to have her happy retirement, but she will be leaving us at the end of the year. So this will be, as we've done in a lot of other um, departments, this will be a, a hire. We can get somebody hired and get them in here before she retires. So this will go, this is just a transitional position. So anybody got any discussion with that one? All right, now, so let me kind of recap here what we've always talked about. We've got, um, so today we'll have 13 hires, which are all our, our promotions in the sheriff's office. And then we have, we moved them to 13 to 14 as a transitional. I'll take the last one up as a, as a um, different matter. How's that? Is everybody good. fine with that? Good. All right. All right, so no discussion with anybody or no personnel issue there. All right. So moving on. Merit increases. We have several listed below. Anybody got an issue with anybody on the merit increase? If not, we'll take all those up in one motion. As always, we always do that anyway. All right, and now at this point, I'll turn it over to the engineer, Mr. Massey. <coughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we have a few subdivisions, quite a few subdivisions for your consideration today. Uh, Thomas Highway 251 subdivision. This is a minor for preliminary and final, creating three lots in District 1. Autumn Woods, phase one, this is a major for preliminary, creating 42 lots in district two. This is the one that the, the gentleman uh, th uh, discussed with the commission this morning. Um, we, we have uh, done a, a lot of review. Um, several of the items that were mentioned, uh, like the water leaving their property, the, the developer has chosen to, to take all of that water they have ditches on their property to take that water and direct it into their uh, retention ponds um, their easements are remaining intact uh, and in the and in location um, the developers engineer has submitted signed and sealed plans uh, that state that the stormwater flow leaving the site after development will be less than the existing stormwater flow leaving that same property. Um, so that's, like I said, there were, I mean, we, we, I've had several conversations with, with Heath Black. He's the one in our office that reviews these. And uh, over the last week, we've been, we've been both looking at it and um, had several conversations with him. So if, if y'all have any further questions about that one, um, feel free to ask. You, you, you're satisfied. It, it, it meets the regulations that, that we have. Um, so, I mean, it, it meets our subdivision regulations. Uh, Southern Gales Estates, this is a minor uh, or major for final approval, creating 38 lots in District 1. Briar Patch Subdivision, Addition 2, this is a major for final approval, creating 11 lots in District 2. Craft Springs, this is a major uh, for final approval, creating 130 lots in District 2. Browns Ferry Village Subdivision Phase 1, this is a major for final approval, creating 70 lots in District 2. And Legacy Grove Edition 12, 
Uh, this is a major for final approval, creating 59 lots in District 2. So District 2 is the big winner today. Or, <laughs> or loser, to loser. on how you, how you want to phrase it. That's 1,000 people <laughs> and 150 children have to have a school to go to. There's a lot of growth still. So, uh, that we've we've heard a lot of we've heard a lot of things uh, over the last few months about growth slowing, and a lot of these subdivisions were started kind of prior to um, some of the the increases in in um, in interest rates and things. But in talking with developers and engineers, they feel like this area we're still going to continue to see a lot of growth. So I think this is one of those things that we have to kind of keep in mind. Well, traditionally, you know, the interest rate that we're at now is, is kind of where it's been traditionally. All those low interest rates were the result of government pushing the economy. So they'll probably adjust to the consumers will adjust to these interest rates right. as the new I, normal. I think that's what a lot of a lot of developers and home builders are seeing. So. Uh, those are our subdivisions for your consideration. Like I said, feel free to talk with me, or if you have any any specific questions that we can't address that we're not addressing right now, um, then feel free to, to grab me and talk with you. Um, another item, uh, talking about our subdivisions. I know that I'd sent all y'all copies of subdivision regulation changes, um, so we we do have some things that we're considering. Uh, those subdivision regulations, I believe, are supposed to be posted for the public to view today. Um, so it'll be posted on our website. So any, if anybody has any questions or comments or uh, suggestions for improvements, anything like that, uh, ask the public to reach out to me, and um, I'll be happy to, to to discuss it. And if there's a if there's a better alternative, then I'm I am I'm open I'm open to to review in uh, alternative perspectives, so so I feel for, so feel free for anybody to reach out to me and discuss it with me. Like I said, they're being made public. Um, we're we're asking for a, a public kind of have a public hearing with the commission on September the fifth, um, so that, that people can have an opportunity to discuss any of those changes. So uh, then we're trying to get finished up in District Four uh, with. Uh, West Limestone School Road on the paving. Um, we, uh, we've, the rain had last week has kind of slowed us down, um, but we've started moving equipment to District 1 to get started on uh, Yarbor Road. Um, so we're trying to get over there and get that going. Um, talking about our, our paving schedule, um, weather patterns haven't been quite what they have been in the past. We had a wet start to the year and we've had, we've the last couple of weeks we've had a lot of rain um, it's, it's kind of put a little bit of a kink in some of our timings um, but uh, we we still believe we can make uh, most of the projects be a completion this year um, I will we will have to kind of deviate some from the schedule so that we can work with the contractor for their portion of projects so um, as long as y'all are okay with us kind of uh, deviating to, to ensure efficiency with the contractor, um, then uh, we should be able to get get most of our most of our projects. We'll just kind of have to kind of keep an eye on it, and I'll keep y'all up to date if I start seeing any any slowdowns or issues anywhere. Um, but like I said, we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, like I said, unless there's a major concern or, or heartburn. Um, I'd like to be able to just kind of adjust our, our schedule as needed to be able to work with our contractors to, to get them in here as efficiently as possible. And that's because most of our projects are chip seal. Yeah, we've got a lot of chip seals um, that need to be that need to be done prior to the contractor moving in. And so we have an October one deadline on chip seal for per the specifications. So um, in trying to meet that October one um, to get those chip seals down prior to the contractor moving in. That would be the that would be the, the reason we'd have to kind of move around a little bit more than we had anticipated. Um, but like I said, we're, we're we are running a few weeks behind from our schedule, and a lot of that has to do with the the rain at the start of the season and the rain we've had for the last couple of weeks. Uh, paving crews work really hard and and been been very successful so far. But um, but we're but uh, in order to kind of have a chance to get those chip seals done prior to the October one. Uh, 
spec cut off. Um, I really need to kind of adjust and move some projects around. Oh, okay with that. Good deal. Anybody got anything for Mark? I don't. All right. Well, appreciate it. No, anybody have any issue with any subdivision, or you said everything is fine with the autumn wood deal? I, it meets the subdivision regulations. Um, we have sign and sealed drawings. We have uh, sign and sealed um, calculations. Um, uh, everything. Uh, they're taking the water they're supposed to take. They're discharging less water than they are allowed to discharge. So um, uh, those are the those are the things that are the, the big big points in our in our subdivision regulations. That where are we all, off here? That I, can, I mean, I can have this conversation. Yeah, we'll have it there. We'll, we'll chat after the meeting. Right. I don't think so. I can have that conversation. Uh, there's okay. no reason. That we'll I'm chat right. after, after the work. We have so a, no reason to get. We'll have a 15 minute break here in a minute. Y'all can, yeah. can discuss the 15 minute break. All right. All right, maybe we'll get it all. But if we have any issues, we'll work through it at the morning. Okay. All right. So moving on, other business. We have uh, applied, uh, approved to sell um, three items on Gov deals from EMA. Anybody got a discussion with either one of those? That's from where they, they had gotten a new generator and getting rid of the old stuff and we're going to put a new one in. So number two will be to sell the following items. Uh, it's a District 1 um, and EMA. So we got any any. Or remove the problem from inventory. So move two from inventory. All right. And one of them, the, the number one is, is where the truck got borrowed. I guess that's where we're moving yeah, it. it yeah, we got to remove it off the end. I mean, they, I, thought, I was hoping the people would bring it back, but they ain't brought it back yet. So that was a stolen vehicle. A stolen vehicle. So we had to remove it from inventory to get it off our books. So yeah. What was on it was worth more than the truck. I think. Yeah. You know, we had it equipped to work with, and they up and stole it and. This is where we're at, trying to get it off inventory. Yeah, it's actually three items. It's one on another from EMA on the rescue equipment. Yeah, and that's just outdated stuff. But anybody got an issue with that? Mm -hmm. If they bring our chainsaw and our toolbox back, we'd be better. I mean, yeah. we probably wouldn't be as upset. Yeah, fuel tank. Fuel tank, toolbox, and chainsaw. If we get them three items back, we'd oh, probably yeah. be all right. All right. So moving on, um, approved to sell the following, to move the following, to transfer the following inventory. And this is from EMA to maintenance. Um, EMA got a new vehicle and we had one that died in the maintenance department so they're going to transfer that over to Allen where he can have something to drive and we moved Allen's vehicle to the maintenance guy at the jail so that's a Brad so it was um because Brad need to pick up truck and this is just something for Allen to drive until we can do better so all right anybody got discussion with that item all right then the next one on here will be to approve for a cemetery trustee for um Ripley Cemetery, and this is on 12144 Friend Road of Athens to ex um, expand said cemetery at the recommendations of the Limestone County Health Department. The county shall not be responsible for ex expenses and the maintenance of costs or anything on this. So, anybody got any discussion with that? I know that's down in your district. It is. So, anybody got it? All right, the number t next one on here will be to approve to allocate $56,000 to the, to the CEOTA as a nonprofit to be used in the relocation of the Horton House from old to the two Old Town Decatur. And the commission finds that this um, allocation will serve as a good and um, proper public purpose. And um, for the history on this, kind of the uh, the Scottsboro boys are moving the <coughs> Horton House from the group there is moving it from Greenbrier to Decatur for a uh, museum and all other cities Decatur and everybody else has pitched in a little bit of something and we're giving a little bit of to help them get it to get it ready to get moved so that's what this is all about so anybody have discussion with that all right so we have no executive sessions we will recess till 9 45 it's right at 9 30 and any we'll be right back here and y'all can